Hello and welcome to Red Live and I hope everybody who is watching this is having an awesome day. Me, I'm doing good man, no complaints whatsoever. Now I do have some red hot news for you today and our first topic of the video, Lyra opens up one year after stroke. So it has been a year since musician Lyra suffered a stroke in Germany and she has opened up about what happened on the day that changed her life. Now she took to Instagram and said that she traveled alone to Frankfurt and her band was coming from Sweden. So Lyra posted the following video on social media and captioned it, Today marks a year since I had a stroke. I was so happy to be in Germany. It had been three years since I traveled overseas due to COVID and I had traveled alone to Frankfurt. The band was coming from Sweden. I arrived two days before my performance. I walked around taking in the sights and scenes and the people. I had seen a poster with at Neil's Land Green Funkinet featuring Moses and myself. I even saw the venue where we would have performed. I spent the whole afternoon walking. At about 4.15 p.m. I had a stroke. The sensation lost about 15 minutes i had no idea what was happening so i kept walking and nobody could see that i had a stroke because i was walking normally i walked into a restaurant but i couldn't talk i moved my mouth but words couldn't come out when i realized this i just broke down the staff at the restaurant offered me a seat i couldn't communicate i thought about asking them the direction to my hotel i was nearby i couldn't communicate that once i stopped crying and got myself together i left it took me two hours to find my hotel. It was about 7 p.m. when I got to my hotel. I couldn't communicate with the receptionist, so I just took a shower and tried to communicate via WhatsApp, but I could not type. The words made absolutely no sense to me. I couldn't figure out what the letters meant and how to put them together. I managed to get a hold of someone special to me and got them to understand that I wasn't alright. 23 March, long story short, I fell asleep and in the morning, my agent tried to reach me. She sent two people to my room and they figured out that I couldn't speak. The German promoter came and called the ambulance. The paramedics couldn't speak English and it's only when I got to the hospital that I found out that I had a stroke. Wow, I was shocked. I cried the whole day and in the morning I accepted my situation. Continued. Wow, indeed, definitely a scary ordeal for someone to go through, especially in a foreign country without any loved ones close by to assist you. But at the end of the day, we're definitely glad that Lyra pulled through and it is a year later and I've seen some posts with did some updates. She is recovering very well. Our next topic, did fifth season partner with Casper Vest after AKA's death? It seems like the beef between rappers Casper Vest and Keenan Jared Forbes AKA AKA is continuing with the rapper no longer with us. Now this is as AKA's fans have continued to hold on to the beef that the two rappers had while AKA was still alive. Now all of this is despite Casper making some efforts in the month since AKA has died. Now the latest I suppose beef between the two rappers comes as a result of Casper revealing his new booking agency. Now to give you guys a little bit of context, AKA in terms of his music worked with Sony Music and the T Effect. However, in terms of his management and content marketing for his music and brand, it is believed that he was working with independent agency Fifth Season. Hence, when the agency took to social media recently to promote Casper Nyovez's upcoming performance, it did not sit well with the Megacy. And it does seem that AKA fans are feeling some type of way as the post suggests that Casper had signed with the agency as a management and booking company. So this is the post in question from fifth season. It is captioned Casper in Campella next month at the Blanket Sand Wine for Africa wide bookings for all African talent. Please contact bookings at fifthseason.com tours, shows and concerts. Look, I will say this, reading this, it does seem that, you know what, they are indeed handling Casper Nyovez booking, well, this booking in particular. But since the outrage, I suppose, on social media from the Megacy, Rafael Benza, the chief opportunity creator at Fifth Season, asked why would they sign Casper when he has a very capable team behind him. He also asked the Megacy not to get distracted from the quest to seek justice for AKA. A little bit more on that later. So yeah, it all starts off with this post. Now, why would we do that with a question mark, question mark, and an exclamation mark there at the end? He also 
also went on to say, we have not signed Casper in your vest in any shape or form. Casper is a talented artist and has an extremely capable team. Don't get distracted. Distracted from what is my question and a lot of people are also asking the same question. Distracted from what? Now taking a look at some of the you know responses on social media, one user wrote, thanks for clarity my mans. Hope both you and the team stay strong through the hurt and these painful times. Thanks again for the work you've sent our way over the years and thanks to your team for being amazing to deal with when we book your talent. Another user wrote, if you didn't sign Casper, the fifth season is promoting him now since when? And when you talk about destructions, what do you mean? You mean streaming, hashtag mass country and make more money for you, right? We are Keenan's fans, not your slaves. So this user is alluding that uh, fifth season only cares about the streaming of mass country to make money for themselves. I mean, do get in the comment section down below and let me know. Another user wrote, we are not distracted, sir. Have y'all always handled his bookings before? Which is a very good question and I do believe that the answer is no from the reports anyway. But hey, do keep in mind that they are a booking agency and at the end of the day, business is business. As cold as that may sound for some, it is the truth. Our next topic, AKA's bodyguard says protocol was breached the day AKA was killed. Enwar Khan, who is also known as Dog, the bodyguard of the late rapper Keenan Forbes, affectionately known as AKA, has revealed that protocol was breached on the day that the rapper was assassinated. Now Dog, who was not present when AKA was gunned down outside the Wish restaurant on Florida Road in Durban in February was speaking on my guest tonight with Annika Larson. Now in the interview flighted on ETV on Tuesday night, Khan said that if he was around, he would have picked up the rapper from the airport straight to the hotel. From there, he would have taken AKA to the show for his performance and then back to the hotel. The next day, Khan would have picked him up from the hotel back to the airport. Now Khan further said that it was the duty of the bodyguard who was assigned to protect AKA on that fateful day to make decisions that would have minimized his exposure to danger. So yeah, it does seem that the bodyguard is kind of spilling the tea. And I will say this, social media is definitely a buzz following Khan's interview where, like I said, a lot was revealed on Keenan Jared Forbes' death. And these claims have breathed life to the allegations that suggest that there was some foul play involved in AKA's murder. Now by now we should be aware that AKA's friend Don Design has been under fire and scores of social media users have suggested that he was behind AKA shooting. Although the Forbes family has already urged the public court of opinion to ease up on Don Design. However, nothing seems to be stopping AKA's fans from making their own deductions and I suppose speculating and believing their own truths. So a user on social media posted the following video and captioned it. Dog says, rules were broken. Keenan Forbes was called and invited to go on Florida Road. Had I been there, that protocol would have not been breached simply because that call would have come through the road manager. Now let me play that clip for you guys real quick. In your placing of yourself as a person, if I know that at a certain time or whatever that and a certain place that you're going to go to, um, I would recommend not to go because anything, when we say restricted movement, it means I'm reducing attacks, I'm reducing threats, I'm reducing everything, so I'm restricting your movement. So in other words, I say I'm picking up from the airport, I'm taking it to the hotel, from the hotel to the show, from the show to the hotel, from the hotel into the airport. No additional movements on the side. In my absence, okay, uh, protocol was breached. Keenan was called and invited to go to Florida Road Wish, which he accepted and he went. Had I been there, that protocol would have not been breached, because simply because that call would have came from the road manager. So would you have said, AKA, you're not going to Wish tonight? Yeah, I don't think we should go there. We are not going there. Look, right from the get-go, I want to say this. For me personally, it feels like this particular bodyguard is throwing the other bodyguards under the bus saying that if I had been there, protocol would have not been breached. I mean, I'm assuming that they all have the same handbook. They all have the same protocols. And if this particular bodyguard saw fit to allow AKA to go to Wish, I don't know what would have been different had he been around. But anyways, like he says, you know, all we could do is right now is take him at his word right now because 
he wasn't there at the end of the day he could say whatever he could have done differently i wish that if that and this and maybes but at the end of the day he wasn't there that is my first feeling of this particular interview so needless to say i feel like this interview is this particular bodyguard coming through to sort of like make himself look like he's the ultimate bodyguard and let us not beat around the bush right here when it comes to the bodyguarding service that was responsible for aka on that day i'm sure that who, you know people who require bodyguard services have said you know what we do not want to work with the people that were guarding aka it does seem that they are incompetent so at the end of the day like i said I'm reading a little bit deeper into this. Maybe I'm going a little bit too deep, but it feels like this particular bodyguard might be trying to clear his name so maybe he can get jobs in the future. I don't know. But personally, if I was a person who was in need of bodyguarding services, I would not hire the same agency that uh, was working with AKA on that night. Heck, I wouldn't hire them to look after my pet. But anyways, that's enough of my two cents. Let's take a look at what users on social media had to say. This user wrote, I've been thinking about AKA's passing and what's bothering me is the silence of the guys that were with him. Why haven't they demanded justice? AKA would have never kept quiet if his close friend was murdered in his presence. He would have gone on a nationwide campaign. Hashtag justice for AKA. And indeed justice for AKA has come through on that trend list here and there if you've been on social media. But yeah, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys think about this particular tweet over there. The user saying that, uh, why are his friends quiet? Why are the people that were with AKA not coming through, you know, campaigning for, uh, you know, the murder to be solved? Another user wrote, so road manager broke the protocol and took Keenan to Florida, which was not part of the initial plan. The dog has already started spilling beans. Another user wrote, Dog said some protocol were broken. Keenan was never supposed to have been in Wish, let alone Florida Road. The inviter, the road manager, the protector of the day, his friends and Keenan himself could have avoided this tragedy. Hashtag justice for AKA. And just like that, we have reached the end of the news. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please do me a huge favor. Share it with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Confuse the hell out of everybody. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Real Live if you haven't. And binge watch my previous videos.